12%, 18% returns per annum. Invest small and reap in big sums. Make your money grow without worrying about managing a property. These are some of the claims that developers make in their assured return schemes that they float. But there's nothing like a free ride in life. So how assured can these assured returns be? Is it safe to invest in such schemes? And what should you keep in mind? Listen in to experts decode the assured returns trap. Where things start getting complicated are twofold. One is when there is actually no property existing that he's selling to you. So he might tell you, I'm giving you a flat on 14th floor when actually the building construction is only till the 10th floor or so and the flat doesn't really exist. So there is no real collateral if you think about it. So it becomes really a finance scheme in that stage. Secondly, what happens is some builders, because they're really short of money, so what they try to do is they might ask the buyer for 10%, 15% or maybe 25% of the money. The rest of the money, they get it from the bank itself. So it is basically a subvention scheme uh, that is uh, launched over there. So the buyer gives a certain amount of money the rest of the money comes from the bank on the name of the buyer itself. So tomorrow if there was uh, any default on the subvention scheme, meaning the builder does not pay the EMIs that were supposed to be paid to the bank, it comes and hits the credit history of the buyer itself. But essentially the builder does benefit many fold because he gets a little bit of money from the buyer, but the rest of the money comes from the bank upfront. This was actually cautioned by the RBI that the RBI said that you, the builders should not be given more money than what the construction stage shows to be. Banks were early, actually, even at the start of the project, if there was a subvention scheme, the builder would come, ask for the bank, the buyer would come up, and the banks would release 80%, 90% of the money when even the construction hadn't started. So RBI did put a uh, stop on that and said they should not be given more money than what the construction stages stay were there. There is sort of a limit where SEBI uh, looks at if it is more than a 100 crore scheme. Uh, then it becomes a collective investment scheme which comes under SEBI. It is still a collective investment scheme under that also, but then there's no straight authority who's supposed to control that. But after 100 crores it is, and you're very right, because you don't know the number of investors, the number of plots uh, they have actually allotted or not allotted, how much money they have picked up across how many projects, because private builders, their accounts are not open. You generally don't know what is going on over there. So my guess is 100 crores in real estate is not much. It's just, if you think about it, 100 flats. And any, any self-respecting project worth 10 acres or so will have about five to 600 flats. And similarly with commercial projects also. So I would guess that most of the builders are doing this in excess of 100 crores, but even less than 100 crores also, the government is considering regulations because just like you said, below the radar, there's a huge number of all these small companies that are actually doing these collective investment schemes and because they are small, they don't reach the threshold of 100 crores, which is just like you said, the pearls came into notice because of that, because it became way, way, way too big. One is a winding up petition. So you go to the register, you file the winding up petition in the registered office of where the company is. Uh, in a case which involves investments and securities, you should of course go to SEBI, because SEBI, as has happened in the case of Sahara, they will order uh, that you refund the money so without getting into, uh, you know, we'll argue legality later, look at financial solvency later, but you start refunding as a process. And I understand in quite a few cases, the refunding has, has been happening, has happened as well. So uh, you should realize that you do have the option of going to the consumer court, filing criminal complaint, filing civil suit, filing winding up petitions, going to SEBI as well. Uh, but, and the other thing is, the more people who join together and take action, the better it is. And time to bring in some colour on the show in our home decor space. Imagine the wall of your house as a palette where you could paint whatever you fancy. And what could be a better idea than to wake up to a wall that has a part of your personality stamped on it? Art on the Wall is a unique company that gives expression to your creativity on your walls. Nidhi Rai shows you how. A home is a place which is not only made of bricks and mortar, but also with love and values. And the walls of your home not only define your living space, but can also reflect your creativity, your hopes, and sometimes even your zest for life. When Mehek Chaudhary decided to move into a new house, all she had were bare white walls that she wanted to splash some color onto. I wanted to add a little bit of color in my house. And for that, the first thing that, you know, anyone could get an idea for a wallpaper. So I decided that, you know, wallpaper, maybe for this big feature wall, 
I didn't want to go for a wallpaper for that but I even wanted to add color and there was something in my mind that I will not have any abstracts or any birds or flowers in my living area but I want I was always fascinated with figures Art is an expression of desire intangible imagination passion and of a life articulated in visuals and that is what art on the wall brings for you a 3 year old wall design company run by Kritika Mahindra was started with the idea of reviving the vanishing art of pop culture signboards and poster art artists we wanted art to be affordable to be available for everyone and not just for uh, high uh, high and rich people we thought uh, let's put the wa- walls to be our canvases and not just a 2 by 2 or a 3 by 3 canvas we should not restrict ourselves so we came up with the idea of bringing those walls becoming a, as a canvas and great and getting different different designs as per the client's requirement uh, you know getting them on the on the wall as per their needs as per their taste as per their interests You just pick a design and select a wall and then the art on the wall team steps in and gives ideas on what will look best on your wall. Then the basic sketching and color scheming is done and is shown to the client. Once the idea is approved, then the final touch-up starts. An average 110 square feet wall takes about 2 days of hard work. we use uh, different types of colors and different types of materials but primarily we focus on oil and enamel based colors because they are longer lasting and they have a very good shelf life you can uh, just get a wall art done and it can be with you for uh, for e- for 10 years for 12 years for 15 years and you need not to do any maintenance on them but then the range and the costing differs for, as per uh, you know from oil to water paint water paint to acrylic uh we do every single thing with hand without using any uh, you know modern technique or uh, equipments and anything art has no limits and the same applies to wall art too you can experiment with themes which come in a wide range for instance you can get a mural or contemporary design if you want something unique and original if you want something which is basic and functional then pop modern and abstract design are your picks graffiti and kitschy paintings is for those who are not scared of trying out something new Wall illusion is also one interesting way of decorating your wall. And if you're not embarrassed to admit to your narcissism, then you can also get your selfie painted up on your wall. These designs can be replicated on any piece of furniture also. The moment they enter, so is it from where did you buy the painting? So it's like it's not a painting, it's actually something on the wall. And few people they even they didn't believe me, so they came and touched the wall. and they were surprised with the and i think uh, they might have not seen this before so that's why they were that surprise uh, thing was there the customized hand painted art gives you a lot of options to design and decorate your walls in a very different manner the palette is your wall and anyone and everyone can have a piece of the art pie so what are you waiting for discover the different spaces of your house and let the art speak for you nidhi rai for nd tv Thank you for staying with us on Property It's Hot. We will come to you every weekend with reviews of property markets, special property showcases and trends in Indian home decor. You can write to us at hotproperty@ndtv.com. That's it for today. Goodbye and have a good week.